This is Celeste from Creatrix Realm, and we're going to continue our part two of creating a web form and um, getting it placed onto a web page. So we created a web form similar to this one, and here it is in our business catalyst setup. So now we have the option of add the web form to page, and I've already created a page. It's on my site, so we're going to go locate that. So there's a Lena Latina Storyteller, and there's registration. There's all the information, and it's going to be placed in this container, like this one right here. So all you got to do is just place your cursor in there, and right here it's one click insert, which is pretty easy. And there we go. There's our whole web form. Now you can do some editing in here if you like. Um, so I created a, a, a class for this text, a style. As you can see, there's different fonts. It's a little bit bigger than the one above. So we're just going to highlight all this down the Submit button and just make sure all that's highlighted. And so this class I just called Black Paragraph Text. So now all of it will look similar. And I usually put a space where the student's information begins. And we can do some more editing there. I'll show you how to do it in the in context editing also. So we're just going to do, um, let's just do a save and publish. So I want you to see that it went through. So here's our site. We just hit save and publish. So Lena Latte to Storyteller. And there it is. It looks like we didn't get two areas of text, um, so we can go and take care of that. Looks like I have to log back in again. Okay, so let's go back to, we'll go to our in context editing site editor. <clears throat> and we'll take a look at it in there. So there's registration, I'll follow this link. And there's all that information. Okay, let's just highlight these two and give it that class. There, let's reduce it. And we'll do the black paragraph text. There, that looks better. Um, but you can also put a web form in here. Let's see. Actually, I take that back. Yeah, you have to put the web form in through the way I showed you initially, and then you can do extra editing through Insight Context Editor um, or back on that um, web form page. But since it's already here, <clears throat> see, this needs to be the black font paragraph. Oops, I like that. There we go. So the nice thing about this is that you can also edit the web form this way too, which will take you back to that main page that we were in. So you can do some editing here and then update it. Or edit the confirmation page. This is a confirmation page. Um, you might want to put a template to it. Um, so the index is the template we have originally which is this template. It doesn't have all of this information in it, but this info, this whole box right here with all this, oh, I may not get the buttons on our left. So all this information on this side where it's highlighted will be removed and it'll get this message, which is basically thank you for your submission and then it'll have information about what they submitted. So make sure you put a template in there so at least it looks like it's part of your website. So I'm going to save that. 
and just keep it generic because any web form that they submit will have this information in it. So let's close that one. Actually go back to this page. So if you edit the form, we'll just test it here. You might have to reapply it to the page. So let's just say we want to put um, like an emergency number here. It's going to put at the very bottom. So let's drag it up to the top. Okay, it's under cell phone number. Then we're going to save. Okay, item was saved successfully. And let's see if it updated it without having to put the new web page in there, the new web form. Okay, whenever you put new information in there, you're going to have to put the web form back in there again. As you can see, we just refreshed and it's not in there. So, <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll go back to this page. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me put the emergency number in there. And then we're going to add it to the web form page again. This is why it's crucial just to get all the information set up in there initially the way you want it to and set the way you like it. Because anytime you add a new field, you have to implement it again. So we'll do register. And we're just going to highlight all this and delete it. This is the old one. Command Z there. <clears throat> and click into insert, insert web form. And there we go. It's back in there. There's the emergency number right there. So let's just save and publish this one. And we're going to go back to this, refresh. And we're going to lose the uh, styling we did originally because we put the web form in again. But we'll see that the emergency number is in there now. It's right there. So we'll go back to uh, <clears throat> just making sure that all this has the correct class. So we're going to highlight all this again. And give it the black paragraph text and save and publish like I said you can do all your editing in here if you want uh, I just wanted to show you that you could also do it on this page too when it comes to formatting the web form <clears throat> there's that information and once again I want to create some space Sometimes if you click on the information on above, it'll take you to this field. So click to the far right, as I did right here. Oop. There we go. Once you click um, on the far right, just use your left arrow button on your keyboard and, and push that right away. I'm pushing it now so I can get to the front of it so it doesn't go into the box. And I just put a space there so they know it's new information for the, the child. So you can modify things here, probably lowercase. I might bold this just so that they understand they need to uh, take care of this, fill out this form. So we'll save and publish. And we'll 
refresh this. And you can see all the information's in there. There's emergency number, there's the space, there are the parts bolded. So there's our, our new uh, web form box. Now we can test it out. Um, let me go back into the workflow. So I'd like to send an email to me so you could see how this looks. So go back to manage workflows. And we're going to close up this. I'll be slowing down my computer. All right, and then the Alina Latina Storyteller program. So we have this step, and the first step was to email Lena. I want to be on that too. So I'm going to do also send workflow to notification to separate by semicolons or semicolons, yeah. So I'm going to put my email and save step. So that way I will get an email also. So when I fill this out, you can see what happens. So we're on a Lena Latina Storyteller. I'm just going to put in a name. I'm going to put in another email. This is one of my other emails, so I'll still receive that. Just putting some generic test information here. All right. Age. I'm school. Grade. And I'll fill that out. In queue, we'll do the image verification and submit. And here we have this page. This is the index template we put as um, to get this information so that it wasn't a generic page. So you get to see what you submitted. Now, all this information will be sent to Alina and me. Uh, I can only show myself because it is me, of course. So you can look right here. I got my workflow notification. So it lets me know that someone registered with all their information in there. And so I got a second one too. So I got two workflow notifications. All right, and it tells me no action is required because we didn't put anything in there. So that way I will go to, let me double check this. Okay, now if I go to my home page, we'll see that the customer is there. So if we want to check it out any further, Here's the information um, about the customer. So from here you can do you know customer cases, basically get your your customer into your your um, your lists or whatever categories you want to put them into, and that'll be a different video I'll go over. Um, but basically it's uh, you can put their details in there, the relationship, the customer cases, the manager subscriptions, um, their history, you know customer's anniversary date. So this gives you a lot of information about the customer um, in general. So 
you can put new tasks with them, new calls, new meetings, things that you need to do for the customer that will remind you. So there's a nice feature once they send you something through web form, you can put them in your customer database. And there we go. So that's basically how you create a web form and apply it to your web page. Uh, so I hope this information's helped, and thank you for watching.